Good morning. Today is my first time that I share the message in our church after I got ordained. So I just a baby ordained minister. So <laughs> I'm still learning and all of you are all my teachers and mentors. The sermon topic today is haunted mind and sword. The background of the scripture today is Jesus' ministries in Galilee started after John the Baptist was arrested. Here, Mark chapter 6 reveals the death of John. We have noticed an interesting parallel between John and Jesus where we read from the first chapter. They baptized the people by the river they proclaim the message different from the mainstream. And lots of outcasts and marginalized people gather around them. They are followers and disciples who also do the similar ministries in their name. Some of John's disciples turn to follow Jesus afterward. In the scripture last week, Reverend Paul shared a message at Shepherd's commencement. Disciples were sent out to preach, to convince people to confess, to heal the sick, and to cast out the evil spirits. We were creating new chapters, both in their own lives and in the ministry under Jesus' name. I know everyone loves TCM. We have TCM at home as well. Some of us might be familiar with Hitchcock's 1940s movie, Rebecca. <laughs> Rebecca is a black and white production. Rebecca was Mr. Maxim de Winter's first wife, who died before the events of the film and is never seen in the, in the movie. However, Rebecca's image and the recollections of her are represented in the lives of Mr. Da Winter, his new wife, and the housekeeper, Ms. Mrs. Danvers. We only know Mr. Da Winter called his new wife, Dearest, the Dearest. She did not have any other name in the movie. Although Mr. Da Winter loved his new wife, he sometimes behaved oddly in ways that reveal his past with Rebecca in his new relationship. However, it seems to me that Mrs. Dearest de Winter was gradually become, becoming the Mrs. Rebecca de Winter in many ways, day after day, such as hosting the party as she did wearing the dress as she did. This recommendation are from the housekeeper, Mrs. Danvers, who was obsessed with Rebecca and kept everything the same as, as if she was still alive. You might have known how the movie ended. The house burned into flame and Mrs. Danvers died with it. Well, there are lots of interesting plots in this movie to mention. But I noticed Rebecca, who never showed up in the film, played an essential role, an influential factor in the whole movie. People in this movie were haunted by Rebecca, even Mrs. Dearest, who never met her in person, was tempted to jump off from the West Wing, Rebecca's bedroom. They were haunted. One of the film criticism comments the movie was an artist's success, but too tragic and deeply psychological to hit the, fa the fancy of the wild audience appeal. However, I found the tragedy and psychological destructions in the real world caused severe damage way beyond that but it seems people might have no idea about what's going on. This TCM though. But back to the Bible we read today, the scripture today is another tragedy. tragedy. 
John the Baptist was killed by Herod to fulfill his promise at the birthday party. It was not a regular family reunion or private event. Herod invites his courtiers and officers and all the leaders of Galilee. They are somebody at that time. And apparently, his stepdaughter performed the dance in front of the guest and made everyone pleased. Someone might say her name is Salome, although her name never mentioned in the Bible. But there are lots of movies, plays, theater, forms, even opera based on her name. The narrator depicts Herod as a man who could do whatever he wants, and nobody can stop him. However, Herod was either neither a good, fa- a good father in a household, nor a good leader in politics. Here is why. As a head of a governing body, Herod could have demonstrated his authority to practice justice accordingly, either based on Torah or other protocol, but he didn't. John pointed out his unlawful behavior, but Herod put him in jail. John did nothing wrong, and Herod knew John was a righteous and holy man. But Herod had John beheaded and had John's head presented to the banquet to show he is the one who is in charge. However, he failed his role as the leader who, could, who was supposed to make the kingdom a just place for everybody. He ruined the Torah by killing an innocent people, a person, and broke the protocol of social regulation. Maybe Herod would have liked to keep his promise. However, either promise to give a half of the kingdom, anything you want, or kill an innocent man, is way too much for a daughter. Herod failed the role as a father, the head of household, to address the fundamental rule of living in the same community. There will be love, respect, and security. Anyone should not harm another person merely because that will make you happy or feel relieved. If Herod would have liked to demonstrate his authority and protect his own honor, pride, or puppy figure, his masculinity was undermined by his wife and the daughter. We see a male leader, a husband, a father, who could not make any decision according to his mind and thought. He has to compromise to request from the females to put another righteous and holy man to death. Oh, I'm well of there's a misogyny here. But the narrator told us in the scripture, even Herod himself knew he was not a good guy, but the one who was sacrificed was. While Jesus became famous and people started to talk about him, who is him? Who is Jesus? Talking about Jesus' identity, Herod heard all of the rumors and possibility, and he concluded, it is John, who I beheaded, has been raised. I can imagine Herod was wondering if John is coming after him for revenge. Herod felt haunted and he recalled his wrongdoing against a righteous and holy man. He recalled why he listened to John's preaching. Herod felt perplexed, but he still would like to hear. However, there's no opportunity now. I've killed him and he's coming after me for revenge. Herod is not alone. Gospel of Mark created a parallel between John the Baptist and Jesus the Christ. Herod Antipas, Pontius Pilate. If we were a reader in the first century, 
we would have two pair of overlap images, John and Jesus, right as a holy man. Prophet proclaimed the message from God. On the other hand, would be Herod and Pilate, fake leader, kill the innocent, behave for their own good. I'm afraid there are still many Herods and Pilates around us, still killing innocent and vulnerable people. They assume they can protect themselves by doing so. But then the power is ultimate and for the ethic, means the condition of losing their hearts, kindness, and consciousness. We might have all experienced similar occasions of losing part of ourselves because we would like to protect something or obsess with something, obsess over something. Last week in Chicago, the Independence Day weekend, there were at least 108 people who suffered gunshot, and 17 of them have died including two police officers, five years old and six, uh, six years old children. Son of the victim, Mary sitting in the park with family. The shooter will bite and trigger the gun. Some say in their own car, driving and gunshot. There are two incidents at the same spot, only two hours apart. I was scared and wondering what's going on. Even my mother had read this news in Taiwan and called me and I was concerned about me. So what's going on here? Do evil spirits haunt this city? Why did those shooters behave like that? Some of us have known Reverend Anthony Williams marching toward D.C and he made it, yet he and other four folks, a team, a small team, spent 11 days walking from Chicago to DC. Their destination was the White House and having the President Biden to declare violence is a public health crisis. Reverend Williams lost his 34-year-old son, Nehemiah, he was killed by gunshot while walking on the street. Some of us have known the leading cause of death among African Americans, especially between 18 to 24, is gun violence. Reverend Williams argued that the gun violence, racism, domestic violence, and global violence are just symptoms. The violence is the root we should not only understand what's going on there through a criminal justice lens, but the lens of violence in our history, in our politics, and among different communities. It's a result of system failure and ignorance that caused this violence to harm people. People obsessed with using violence to resolve their anxiety, disappointment, and perplexity. They do not know another way to protect themselves from the evil spirit, the violence. Although I don't think Reverend Williams met the president on July 4th in person in DC. However, Illinois Governor Pritzker has signed on a law, Health and Human Service Reform Act, in April to measure the target communities, bring in more medical resources and social care, education and economic system to, re to reduce the violence. In, in Illinois, at least, it seems to me that we have a step forward to declare independence from the violence. However, there are still many works need to be done. Christians do believe the evil spirit was working hard and is working harder in this world today. 
Jesus sent out his disciples to proclaim the message of redemption, the good news, ask people to confess their sin and turn around to heal the sick and cast out the evil spirit. While John the Baptist's followers heard of his death, those disciples came and took his body and lay in the tomb. So did Jesus' disciples and followers. Death is not the end of the story. They all continue the ministry they have learned from their teachers, their mentors. They might be afraid of the power and the authority. Their patience and heart got lost in the period of time. But they still carry on and walk on the streets in a longer run. By reading Mark and is an examining our context in Chicago, I feel the merging, the merging of visions. I believe the resurrected Jesus is among us, still leading us and demonstrating through us the power from the above. Amen. Let's pray. Living God, give us the strength to face our imperfection. Send your spirit to guide us through all the difficult decisions we need to make. May you unite us to work together against the evil. May your grace transform us and give us peace. Amen.